super awkward because everybody's talking about being humble and getting your head out of your ass, and my thing is about just being cocky and awesome. <laughs> um, so I'm Justin Genak, I'm an artist, entrepreneur, and a recovering advertising art director. I started my career uh, about 10 years ago at Ogilvy as an art director. Uh, I was there for a couple of years and then I moved on to agencies like Fallon, New York, and a small place called Toy. Uh, but I'm really here to talk to you about ideas. There. <laughs> and the animated gifts. I really like the animated gifts in the on. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of that. Uh, and for, well, this is like an intern thing. So uh, I just want to give you my background of where I started. Uh, my first internship, I had my junior year uh, or sophomore year of college, and I got fired on the second day because uh, I showed up two hours late. And then I had another internship, and I was pretty terrible at that. Uh, so even if you're a shitty intern, you can end up doing at least somewhat interesting things. Um, so I'm a duty to ideas, uh, inspired by ideas. Uh, I, I can't get enough of them. I'm motivated by the raging idea and the idea every day. I'm on the internet, seeing all the cool shit my friends are doing, and my friends' friends, and just people out there. And that's what keeps me going. Uh, and being in advertising, uh, there actually wasn't enough uh, ideas being made. Like we spend all our days coming up with ideas, we focus group them, we test them, and then we kill them. And there wasn't enough making happen happening. So after five years of working full time in the business, I quit and decided to freelance and put more effort into my personal projects and the ideas that I had. Um, and like most people, I, you know, we all are creative people. We probably hoard tons of ideas that we have that someday we want to get to and make. Uh, I started taking those and putting them up on a post-it note and putting them on my wall. And one of my career goals is to get in the New York uh, Magazine approval matrix. Yes. Have you guys seen that? Yeah. Like, all know I've made it and been in New York and made it as a New Yorker if I can get in there. So I actually printed out a poster-sized version of the approval matrix and I put all my ideas up there on post-it notes. <laughs> and it'll at least remind me of the stuff I want to do. And so I have a few criteria of the, the filter I put my ideas through uh, to decide you know, whether or not to move forward with them. And the first thing is they've got to be smart. Uh, I just want people to respect my ideas for being smart. Uh, the next is simple. Now there's like that classic adage of the 30 second elevator pitch, but I think that's actually 20 seconds too long. I think any idea you have, you should be able to describe in a sentence. Because if you can't do that, then how do you expect someone on Twitter or a blogger, and anybody else to put it out there. Like, everything's so condensed now, we kind of need to keep our ideas uh, so they, they shout for us and they do the hard work for us in just a sentence. So like one, one idea that uh, my wife Christine and I did, if I say it in a sentence, you'll probably put like, a tiny sentence, blindfold and get rapid. You, you already have an image in your head, and it's probably that. So it's that, that simple. We did this at Parker's Estate. Uh, Parker's Estate over on Great Jones Street. If you haven't been there, go. It's an amazing gallery, store, art space. We did this the weekend before Christmas, and people could bring in any gift or buy a gift there, and we would wrap it blindfolded. And we just like <laughs> took it. It was really dangerous. We had uh, nails. You had, to, you had to fill out a sheet of how much you liked the person that you got the gift for, and then that dictated how we would actually wrap the gift. Um, so we passed it to you back and forth, and then they turned out like this. Um, and people could uh, pay whatever they wanted, all the money went to charity, so if you want to do a fundraiser, feel free to do this too, it's super fun. Uh, the next is I want my ideas to be surprising. You know, there's so much shit out there in the world that if you're not uh, shaking people out of their routine and giving them a, a little bit of delight and surprising them, then it's probably not going to get cut through or get any attention. Uh, and the most important thing that it seems like 95% of the world never asks when they make something. <laughs> Will anyone give a shit? It's like, you know, there's so, like, advertising is fueled by millions and millions and billions of dollars of stuff that nobody gives a shit about. They spend, you know, thousands of dollars making banner ads that we don't even pay attention to and we actually click to close and, and try, to, try to ignore it. So I just want to make sure when anything I put out there, will someone give a shit? So one of those ideas uh, that I pursued uh, is the project New York City Garbage, uh, which I feel like a real asshole now. You're talking about the, the rag pickers in Delhi, and I'm this guy who's selling garbage, but whatever. Uh, so, uh, I'll get over it. Um, so I started this when I was uh, at an internship at MTV. This is the one that lasted more than a day. Um, and one day we were having a discussion about the importance of package design, and someone said package, package design didn't matter. 
And I was like, well, that's ridiculous. So I figured if I could package something that absolutely nobody would ever want to buy and convince someone to buy it, then I knew my package design was successful. So I was looking out at Times Square, and then I realized, oh yeah, garbage. I mean, obviously, they don't want it, and throw it away. So if I can package that into something that people like, maybe, we'll be able to, maybe I'll be able to prove uh, it right. So, a lot of that hair. My sideburns actually went backwards. They didn't go this way, they went this way. Um, so anyway, I made about a dozen of these. I uh, set up with this little cardboard box that I had spray painted garbage for sale on with silver spray paint and masking tape. And I spent all day out in Times Square hawking garbage. And it's like, wherever you're from, your garbage sucks compared to ours. Uh, New York City garbage, I pick it so you don't have to. Uh, and nobody bought them. And I was out there for like probably like six, seven hours. And finally, at like 10 o'clock at night, there was an older gentleman from Ecuador who didn't speak any English besides being a Lancer Ecuador. Uh, and he somehow got it and he connected with it and he understood and he bought the first cube. I was like, all right, cool, I did it. And then the next day I went back out with a little bit of confidence and I ended up selling like three or four more. And I was like, all right, well, maybe I should do something with this. So I made a website, and I don't know if any of you guys remember Image Ready. It used to come with Photoshop. Everyone's probably way too young, I'm being myself. But it was like the most remedial way to make a website. And I just put up a really crappy website with like rollovers that affected the entire page and it was really slow. But I put it up and it worked. And I started getting uh, like, Press, like traffic and press, and I did something that had NBC News in my dorm room and doing stories about it. And I guess it's a little blown out there. Uh, so, this is what the cubes look like. And they're just four and a half inches tall. Put a label garbage in New York City, 100% authentic, handpicked from the Fort Street from New York, New York. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I did, I tried to think of like, what would make people want to buy garbage. And uh, so I was like, oh, well, if I know that I could make it sound authentic and make sure it's clear, and then maybe I'll like, stick around with the data it's picked, because that makes it more <laughs> Sealed, like, well, I seal it shut so it doesn't leak or smell. And then I, uh, I decided to number each one because that makes it more collectible too. So I still had to number each one on the bottom. Uh, and, and they started selling. And initially, you know, how much do you price garbage for? Well, I did $9.99. Uh, that seemed like a good idea. So I sold it for 10 bucks and they kept selling. And they were selling like crazy. And I was in school as a sophomore in SBA or junior in SBA at the time. And I couldn't keep up the demand. I had garbage bags in my in my uh, <laughs> so it was ridiculous. And uh, so then, uh, it's too bad they're all going out. But you can see them on the website. I want to see art.com. So this one has a little plastic Starbucks cup. And uh, I go out really late at night. So I'm super squeamish, uh, and I, I don't get anything gross, and I, and, you know, I don't want people looking at me. So because I'm also in the city, so it's obvious. So every time I get garbage, so here's a couple of them. It's a free coffee cup. Uh, got matches there. It's kind of cool. People buy them for different reasons. And one of my favorites is a guy uh, emailed me and he said he worked at satellite, uh, Sirius Satellite Radio. And he had one on his desk as motivation for him and his employees that if I could sell garbage, that they could sell satellite radio. <laughs> Try to like ease the demand on myself. I raised the price of twenty-five dollars to curb sales, uh, but they kept selling. Uh, and the thing I like about garbage is every piece of garbage played a role in someone's life. Uh, you know, like every day we have stuff we throw it away, but you know, whether it's like you know a cup of coffee that got you going in the morning to your interview, or here this one, I always find parking tickets ripped in half, <laughs> so you know exactly what happens. You know, like, 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 shit, they ripped it and threw it down, and then I pick it up and I immortalize it. <laughs> It's hard to tell it's a piece of glass and a balloon and like a crush pan and some rolled up tape. Oh, so uh, yeah, the $25 thing didn't really work with curbing sales, so I raised the price to 50 bucks. And they still keep selling. Uh, and it was kind of amazing that when they were $10, people just saw, saw it as kind of like a joke. And then when it was $25, people thought it was a really nice souvenir. And then when I made $50, people started talking about it as art. <laughs> Perception. That's pretty much the entire luxury goods business based on this idea. So, uh, here's another one. like a little kid's prop shoe. It's really cute. Uh, oh, and then, you know, I got really ballsy and I started making limited edition garbage for $100 a box. <laughs> so, I did everything from New Year's Eve Times Square, the uh, Republican National Convention. This is from Obama's inauguration in DC. Uh, this, we got, my wife and I got flown over to Dublin, Ireland by the Dublin City Council and we made a hundred garbage shoes from the St. Patrick's Day Parade right in downtown Dublin. 
<laughs> the nice thing about the limited editions is you can very much tell where they're from. Like all the garbage I have pictures of, it's all green, white, and orange. Or like this one. This was from the first day of gay marriage was legal in New York. And so I went down to the city clerk's office and uh, collected like, it's like a party down there. So, <laughs> so I found this, I found like a ring box, which is really beautiful. But you can kind of like, you can tell, I say gay marriage, I'm like, oh yeah. Uh, or this one's from the Giants Victory Parade down the Kennedy Nero, so it's like all sorts of like confetti and toilet paper, people from roll the toilet paper out, and that's an air horn thing. So it's, it very much commemorates that moment in time, and, and it's a little like old time castle. And this is where they are now, I've sold over 1,300 cubes. Uh, it's over, people in over 30 different countries. And I try to keep track of where everyone goes, and I keep sending pictures. Uh, so there's one like this, like this one, like a small color, it's like the Italian countryside, it's beautiful. This one with an open Trojan is in front of the Duomo in Milan. So I'm just going to go through one more right here pretty quickly. Um, this one is uh, Wants for Sale. My wife Christine and I started it about five years ago. And I, I, I'm always attracted to this combination of highbrow and lowbrow and, and, and the, the contrast and the, the tension of those. So this is a very similar thing. Uh, where we paint things that we want and sell it for the price of the real item. So we painted buffalo wings, we sold it for twelve dollars and seventy cents, and then when we sold it, we went out and bought buffalo wings. <laughs> <laughs> we made an iPhone and the original iPhone came out, and it was six hundred forty-nine dollars and seventeen cents, but then they dropped the price, so we did too. So Four thirty-two for the two, and we got an iPhone. Uh, we go everywhere from something cheap to something expensive. This is financial security for a million dollars. Still available if you want it. <laughs> Uh, we made up a really simple website, sent it to about 20 or 30 friends, and within two weeks we had over 50,000 visitors to the site, just by the word not spreading. Uh, some buffalo wings. Uh, this one was drinks on us, it was $500 to take our friends out for drinks, and we sold it and got our friends around. <laughs> we did an entire day's vacation from the flights, hotel room, gambling money, more gambling money, even more gambling money, <laughs> uh, buffet, and even top of showgirls, that's pixelated, you can't see. 